Hi there, this is David and welcome to my impression of Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3. I want to first thank Nisa for the review copy that they sent me to make this early impression possible. Currently I've spent roughly 20 hours on the game and completed the first chapter and I still have barely scratched the surface on what this game has to offer. Therefore, all footage of this impression will come from the prologue in the first chapter, so you shouldn't be concerned too much about spoilers. If you'd like to experience the game for yourself after watching, the demo is available for free to download from the PlayStation 4 store. For those of you who have never played any of the other games in the series, this is a great place to start because, firstly, there's a comprehensive summary of the events that occurred in the first two games, secondly, there's a new set of heroes to get to know, and thirdly, because this is on a new system, there are no carryover bonuses that you may have otherwise fretted about missing. Also, Reen and the others do do a good job of providing pertinent background information on the various characters that you'll encounter, as well as the locations that you'll visit all around Erebonia. The game of course stars Reen, who has now graduated at Thor's University and is a certifiable hero, for better or for worse. Many Erebonians welcome him as a celebrity, while Crossbellians and North Ambrians revile him as a conquering invader. Instead of cashing in on his newfound fame, he instead decides to become an instructor at the new Thor's branch campus in Leaves, which is located a bit to the west of Heimdall. Here he meets the new Class 7, Yuna, a former police academy cadet from Crossbell, Kurt Vander, the son of Mueller Vander and nephew of One-Eyed Zex, and rounding out the team is Altina, who you might recognize from the previous games, as she served as an antagonist and high-ranking member of the Intelligence Division there. The story progression takes a page straight out of Cold Steel 1's book, with school and free days being held in leaves, and weekend field studies taking place all around Western Erebonia, and even into the newly annexed Crossbell. In the previous games, we were only able to explore the eastern half of the Empire, so it's nice to finally be able to see firsthand all the locales that we've only formally heard tell of. As you explore, you'll encounter some new faces, as well as old friends, and even enemies. It's like you're coming back home as you progress throughout the game, and Falcom really never ceases to surprise and delight its fans, with people coming in from the Sky Trilogy and Crossbow Duology to make an appearance in Erebonia. The battle system has been changed for the better as well. New to it is the Brave Order system, which takes the place of buffs that were previously classified as crafts. The Brave Orders also don't take up a turn, so feel free to use them to your heart's content. You're only limited by how much BP you have, which you gain back by successfully pulling off link attacks. This is really the only noticeable change in the system, but on the field you can automatically initiate triple advantage encounters easily just by pressing the R2 button before a fight. But you'll want to save that though for the harder encounters because you can't really use it all the time, you're limited by a gauge which is replenished by breaking boxes, jars, and other paraphernalia scattered around the world map. Some other welcome additions are now that orb mints allow you to equip two master courts, and the fast forward feature is built in so that you can run around, quest, and battle at four times the default speed. Between the fast forward feature and the auto battle, grinding is now painless and loading times have been greatly reduced from what they were in the first two games. Nisa did a fantastic job with localization. I haven't encountered any grammatical or continuity errors thus far, they really took their time with this one and it shows. So you haters out there can just get a grip. The voice acting is well done and abundant. However, the whole silent ring thing rears its ugly head on more than one occasion. The graphics are beautiful, crisp, clear, and the music is warm and inviting. There's nothing really jarring here. Overall, it's a fantastic entry into this beloved series, and any fan of the franchise should definitely pick it up. JRPG fans in general who have never played the series before can also confidently purchase this and have a great time. Though, in order to fully enjoy the experience and soak it all in, I do highly recommend playing the other games in the Cold Steel series, and to fully immerse yourself, pull out the old PSP and play the Sky Trilogy as well. That can also be found on Steam. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.